Ranking Member Lucas for an opening statement. Thank you, Chairman Lamb, and I would like to congratulate you on your new position as Chairman of the Energy Subcommittee, and thank you for holding this hearing today. And I also appreciate your acknowledging former Chairman Gordon in attendance with us today. I've had the privilege of serving with five of the previous chairmen whose portraits are on this wall, and I look forward to the inevitable day when we have the first uh, lady portrait hanging, which is now inevitable too. Uh, that'll be a good day. That said, ARPA-E was created to help the U.S. energy sector maintain its competitive edge in developing advanced energy solutions. The program was established to jumpstart technologies that were too early stage to attract private sector investment that could have a significant impact on the energy market. In order to accomplish this, ARPA-E was given a unique management structure with the flexibility to start and stop research projects based on performance. Program managers have expedited hiring and firing authority to make sure that ARPA-E staff can adequately select and support. Today, ARPA-E supports fundamental research over a wide range of cutting-edge energy technology areas, including bioenergy, battery technology development, and advanced nuclear. But despite some fascinating areas of research, ARPA-E is not without controversy. For example, many ARPA-E programs have significant overlap with programs goals of DOE's Applied Energy Research Programs. We'll hear testimony today supporting big increases in spending for ARPA-E, but with $6 billion in annual spending already devoted to applied research elsewhere in DOE, ARPA-E and any increased spending for it is redundant if it's not refocused on more innovative research. Now that brings us to the second problem. We've heard concerns over the years that ARPA-E isn't meeting its intended goal, to fund the kind of technologies that are so pioneering they would never attract private sector investment, but instead providing funding to big companies with access to capital markets or funding research that's already succeeding in the private sector. ARPA-E is a program that can and has had tremendous impact on the development of new energy technologies. But we must address these concerns and refocus the agency on funding the most innovative research, that's why I, too, introduced a bill to reform ARPA-E in the last Congress, which passed the House in a bi with bipartisan support. This legislation expanded the mission of ARPA-E to include the full DOE mission and empowered the agency to promote science and technology-driven solutions to DOE's broader goals. My bill also included important direction to prevent the duplication of research across DOE and ensure that the limited taxpayer dollars are spent in the most transformative technologies not in competition with the private sector. I hope that we can work together to include those reforms in any reauthorization of ARPA-E this Congress. It is our job to be good stewards of the taxpayers' resources, of course, and with the right mission goals and common sense conservative management, I believe ARPA-E's innovative approach can build on basic science and early stage research at the department. We can help fast track new technologies that will grow our economy, stabilize our environment, and maintain U.S. leadership in science and technology around the world. I want to thank our witnesses for being here today, and I look forward to a productive discussion this morning.